Hello and welcome to Revit for BIM Training Seminars Session 3 Curtain Panelling Systems. This is part 1 in project curtain walling. My name is Patrick Thornhill, I work at the University of the West of England. If you'd care to join us on LinkedIn, search for the group BIM at UWE. Okay, so into the Revit environment. I have opened up a new project. So if you're following on from previous ones, you might want to do the same. We're going to look at, um, first off, curtain walling in its uh, most basic form. And to look at that, I think the best thing to do is go to the Architectural tab, go to Wall, and drop down the list of possible wall types. Down the bottom, there are three curtain wall possibilities. We're going to use curtain wall, the top one, which is a very, very basic curtain wall that has no preloaded elements within it. Exterior glazing and storefront are good ways of getting um, very quick curtain walls done, which have got elements loaded in, such as mullions, um, etc. But I want to show you how to do one from scratch. So, start the curtain wall tool. We're drawing on level zero, and we're just doing unconnected eight meter height. So I'm just going to draw a simple wall. Hit escape. Use my top toolbar to jump to level three. So we've got a representation of where this curtain wall is going to be. At the moment, it's got no paneling systems. Now curtain walls are all about pal panels and mullions. If we select it we can start making changes to the height etc and here we turn it to a structural form there if we wanted it to show up on the um, structural analysis side of Revit but let's look at some of the basics here curtain grids and mullions now curtain grids is the best place to start this allows us to if I hover over the horizontal top I get a vertical split line and you see I get some temporary dimensions I can do this by eye for now I can of course be accurate afterwards and I can lay whatever spacings I like notice all segments is highlighted on the top here and I can do some horizontal ones as well if I change it to one segment you see I can start introducing smaller elements. If I choose all except picked, I get the full length, either vertical or horizontal. Click that. Now I'm excluding ones, so I can exclude that one, and that gets rid of that. I could do the same vertically and exclude that one but also exclude that one at the moment these are splits or breaks in the glass that's probably the easiest way to think about it we don't actually have any mullions on these points at the moment so let's add some mullions we go to curtain wall mullion on the architecture tab now I can come in individually here grid lines or grid segments so I can come in one by one at the moment I've got a rectangular mullion 50 by 50 there are some preloaded types in here and we're going to talk about how to bring in more later or change the existing ones to ones that might suit us we'll have a look at that very shortly or I can say all grid lines and then notice the whole of the system is highlighted I just need to click once and that's added mullions to all of the grid lines I can come in here and make changes if I want at the moment the vertical ones are overlapping the horizontal if I wanted to change that I'm selecting and holding
holding my control. If I'm careful, I can come in, maybe grab all of those, and say make continuous. That overrides that, and now my horizontal is overriding my vertical. But verticals will always override horizontals. Um, I guess that's to do with the structural integrity of the um, curtain panelling system, so it naturally lends it to itself to being self-supporting. So next we should look at the mullions and how we can change their family properties within the curtain walling system. Now mullions act like any other family objects, we can change the properties. If I hover and select this particular mullion, it's a 50 by 150 rectangular mullion, I can make changes to it by simply swapping to one of the other options here, say a 30 mil square mullion. This is much smaller. If in that selection there is not the option that you want, then we need to make our own mullions. We can do that in one of two ways. With the mullion selected, we can go to Edit Types. Using best practice, we use the duplicate button, and let's say let's make a let's make a large one. Let's make a 300 by 300 mil square one. We have the option here to change the thickness 300, and let's add a zero to each of those. This is the side 1, side 2, outside and inside, 150, 150, OK that. So you see that one has now changed to that new type. If I wanted to change all of them to that type, I could right click on one and say select all instances, either visible in view or entire project. I get all my mullions, my new 300 by 300 is now waiting in there and I get a much bigger mullion type. Okay, so that's one way of editing existing mullions. Another way is to make our own profiles. To do that we have to come out of this environment and go into the family creation project. So go to the R, go to new family metric profile mullion, and open that. This is just a profile so it's just a two-dimensional line. We have exterior, we have interior, center of mullion. Line. I'm going to draw a rectangle to start with. Of course I can parameterize this if I wanted to. Let's introduce an arc on the exterior and we'll introduce a recess on the interior. Use my split elements there and there to make a break in that original rectangle and then use my trim to click on the parts of the lines I want to keep. Okay, once that's done, if I sweep select across all of those, go to move, grab the center point of there then again use my move command to grab that center point and I'm just going to do this by eye. Let's load this into the project after saving it and now I can load it into the project. Unlike some objects that you may have created you don't actually have hold of the mullion when you bring it and load it into the project you've just added it to a list of available mullions and to get hold of that list, we need to go in here, select one of the mullions, right click, and say select all instances visible in view. Go into edit type. Now we want to duplicate. Notice this section here, profile. This is where my test mullion profile is waiting for me to select it. So, OK that. Now you'll see, obviously, it's not the best thing in the world, but you'll see the profile is added 
to the mullions. Another thing you need to be able to change is the panelling system itself. Now, this has got quite complex, so I'm going to undo. Panels are quite hard to select. Hover over there and you'll get curtain wall. You get the panel and you'll get the grid line and you'll get the mullion. I'm tabbing through pressing the tab button on my keyboard. I've selected the curtain panel it says curtain panel glazed. The only options loaded in are glazed and solid. If I want to make my own panel if I go to the large letter R, go to new, go to family, click on there and find curtain wall panel and list. Open that up. I'm going to do an extrusion. I'll draw a line from the back. I'm going to give it a thickness. I'm going to give it an equaling thickness there. And then I think I'll use my spline through points. If I press the tick now, I've just made that into an extrusion. We can see that if I go to the 3D on the top, it's quite a narrow extrusion. If I go to my front elevation, my overall panel is set up to have these work planes. Now we need to do some locking to these work planes. So if I align my top work plane with that face, and lock it down. The rest should be already locked. I should be able to grab and move my panel. So you should now see I have an undulating panel. Let's put some realistic and you'll get a better idea of that. If I select the panel I can of course add a material, but I'm just going to make it into glass. So save as and load into project. Okay, and again that's just added it to a list of possible panels. If I now tab through to select my panel and right click and say select all instances visible in view I've now got all of my panels which I can now drop down and find my test panel listed at the bottom. So associate my test panel to those and you'll see I now have my test panel on those. Okay so that's a little introduction into working within the project and bringing in mullion profiles and new panelling systems.